हेलो फ्रेंड्स हाउ आर यू ऑल आई होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग वेल आई एम ऑल्सो फाइन सो स्टूडेंट्स टूडे इन दिस वीडियो ऑफ इंडिया फोर्टी वन आई एम गोइंग टू मेक यू रिवाइज द एग्रीकल्चरल एक्टिविटीज आई विल कवर दिस कॉन्सेप्ट इन दिस वीडियो एंड देर विल बी नो पार्ट ऑफ दिस वीडियो आई विल रिवाइज द होल कॉन्सेप्ट फॉर यू हियर this is part 1 part 1 means lecture number 1 as we have provided the lectures we have divided the course into different sections and these are your class notes first of all we first studied concept number 1 and what all things we are going to cover in the india is 41 and as i had told you that there are three major concepts in india is 41 and we will be discussing them in detail first we wrote down the name of biological assets then we noted the name of agricultural produce and then we wrote government grants for agriculture these were the three main headings that we discussed in india's 41 what are biological assets and how is their accounting and valuation done we had made three concepts headings what is agricultural produce how is its accounting and valuation done and how is the accounting of grants done okay then we moved on to the second concept and we started with important definitions as you know before starting in as we can't proceed with our discussion until you understand the definitions in the definition first of all i had told you the meaning of biological assets there were only two main definitions one was for biological assets and the other for agricultural produce first i explained this definition to you then i explained this definition then we moved to the accounting part and then valuation part first of all we covered the meaning of biological assets i will start explaining it when we learned the meaning of biological asset in class i explained you in a very simple way that the meaning of biological assets is a living plant or living animal plant animal these are the biological assets and i mentioned just one small exception what was that that bearer plant is not included in the plants why because we studied about bearer plant in india 16 under ppe so excluding the bearer plant we cover all the other remaining plants and all the animals under the india is 41 a student also asked me on text that the india is 41 is about agriculture activities and you are teaching the india is so this is applied on either big companies or listed companies or if its net worth is up to 50 crores so this agriculture term is all about farmers and farming how is it applicable on the companies so students we had discussed in class that big companies like reliance have started to involve in agricultural activities and they have made it their business on an extensive level if any company is involved in agricultural activities and it is in compliance within as it will have to work within the scope of 41 india's 41 let's leave that aside let me just revise the meaning for you in the biological assets one is plants next is animals the bearer plant is not included in plants because it comes under in as 16 and then we had a discussion about the difference between a normal plant and a bearer plant so i had explained you in a very simple way that if a plant listen to me carefully if any plant provides you with agricultural produce then it will be categorized as a bearer plant if any plant itself becomes an agricultural produce then it will be considered as a biological asset there is a difference if any plant itself becomes a biological asset if a plant itself becomes an agricultural produce then it is your biological asset and if any plant provides you with agricultural produce 
then it is your bearer plant or let's leave it let's take simple example of crops in a farm you sow crop you sow wheat crop and cut it harvest is ready you cut it you sow rice the rice crop okay the rice crop is ready we cut it you planted cotton plants picked up the cotton swab and put in your bag and cleared the field i am talking about the crops you grew various crops and harvested it so these crops when these crops are ready then they become the agricultural produce let's compare it with an apple tree a mango tree and an orange tree so let's say there is an apple tree you don't cut down the apple tree but you take the harvest of fruits from there once in each year when the fruit harvest gets ready then you pick the fruit so it is providing you agricultural produce in the form of apples in the form of mangoes basically it is providing you the fruits it may either give you almonds or cashew nuts and you all know their life is minimum 25 to 30 years if kept well maintained i told in the class also that i also have around 100 acres of mandarins orchard this is a hybrid of orange and malta of punjab known as kinnu which is very popular in south india i have 100 acres of kinnu orchards it has a life of 30 years and it took 3 years to cultivate and yield fruits orchard is ready a caretaker is appointed it will last you 25 to 30 years so when you cut down a tree you have grown that is your biological asset literally we don't cut down the trees we take their yield the fruits and sell them in the market the tree remains there i had explained in a simple way becoming an agricultural produce or providing the agricultural produce both are different then i told you to take example of sugar cane you cultivated sugar cane and harvested the yield rice wheat cotton sugar cane all of these crops which are cultivated they are considered as the biological assets the crops are harvested leave this i gave you another example of tree suppose you planted teak trees the cultivation of teak tree takes 15 to 20 years you planted poplar or pine trees they don't yield fruits but it will take 15 to 20 years for the wood to be ready that wood will be used in furniture at home or anywhere after cultivating for 15 years the tree is ready you cut it it is not giving any fruit but you will get wood from it so all of the wood trees and crops that you have all of these are considered as your biological assets but all of your fruit trees a tree which gives any fruit or any other agricultural produce take the example of rubber plant which gives latex life is 25 30 years all the plants which are not cut down but continue to provide agricultural produce are bearer plants they are treated like a factory you have set up a factory with continuous production you planted a fruit tree and it is giving fruits every year we don't cut trees that's like machine for earning money bearer plants come under the end as 16 but all the crops and wood trees come under end as 41 then i told you about animals suppose you have opened a dairy farm and kept cows in it you kept the cow for milk if you open a poultry farm and keep hens for eggs or suppose you have created a herd of sheep to obtain wool if you will raise all these animals you can earn a lot of money you should have knowledge suppose you have built a bee farm for producing honey four years back i went on a family tour to phuket thailand as true enjoyment is with family i am a family man and i don't get involved in such wrong things i always suggest you guys in class also to stay away from smoking and drinking it is best to stay away from negative things as much as possible these things not only harm physically but takes away the peace of mind also you should not do it and not even think about it let's continue i went to phuket i saw bee farm it was a magnificent bee farm 
and they were producing a high quality honey there good earnings if you know these days cage free eggs are quite popular if a normal egg is sold for 5 rupees it is sold for 25 rupees these hens are kept cage free in a poultry farm and they can roam freely in the farm people prefer naturally obtained eggs this business is a very large scale one the mother dairy they sell milk likewise amul also sells milk they have come a long way so it is a business which needs in as compliance so if you have cows sheep goats hens they all fall under in as 41 because these all provide you agricultural produce what did biological assets mean so we have understood that biological assets means living plants and living animals which provides agricultural produce crops woods these all examples are written here after that cow sheep poultry all of this is written bearer plant apple tree mango tree and all the other fruit trees these are considered as ppe and not as biological assets i have made you revise all of this which is in notes you can pause the screen if you want to read okay now what did i tell you in the last concept i had told when we do agricultural work to remove the produce from biological asset we need to rely on some more assets suppose i want to do farming for that i need land to grow crops or trees or anything how would you do farming without land so agricultural land does not comes under the ind as 41 because agricultural land will be categorized under the ind as 16 okay if i need instruments equipment or a tractor and a lot of other things for farming so they will come under ind as 16 as they are ppe i will be talking about crops woods and animals but the other assets that you are used to extract produce they all will be deal in natural head let's say you have taken a license for farming or to build a poultry or for a bee farm that license comes under in as 38 as intangible any asset bought on lease will come under the ind as 116 i have made you write this see this here following assets are not considered as biological assets if any asset is used to obtain agricultural produce from biological assets then such an asset will be covered under the natural head if it is agricultural land then it will come in ind as 16 any other assets like tractor and equipments and like i have told you the bearer plants will also come under ind as 16 if there is a grant for a bearer plant like the bearer plant comes in in as 16 so its grant will also come under it any license will come under in as 38 and rou means right of use on lease assets so it will come under 116 116 we have done this we have revised the first definition we have done this and just revising now we have done the first revision of biological assets which are plants animals except bearer plant the remaining assets in natural heads then we then we studied about a very important definition the second definition this is a very important definition about agriculture produce meaning of agricultural produce what was the meaning of agricultural produce harvested product from biological assets the product which you have detached or you have separated which you have received from biological assets at the time of harvesting i had told you the use of at the point of harvesting and i had taught this already just listen carefully as we are revising it now the meaning of agriculture produces harvested product at the point of harvesting what does harvested product mean to detach for example you took milk from the cow like we say we have got the milk and we call it hand milking i hope you know this 
you must be wondering why a ca is discussing all these farming things anyways you got the milk so the milk you got is agricultural produce the milk that you got from the cow is considered as agricultural produce but if you took this milk to your dairy and made clarified butter from it or made butter and buttermilk from it this product is obtained from processing it and does not come under in as 41 but in in as 2 they are processed goods so the product received or taken out at the point of harvest is known as agricultural produce if you create anything after further processing it it won't come under in as 41 it will come under in as 2 and it is the inventory so we have studied cow is an animal and its milk is an agriculture produce which comes in in as 41 after this other products obtained through further process like butter will be discussed in in as 2 amul milk butter milk clarified butter is also available milk can be used to make things like ice cream let's take another example i raised sheep and i obtained wool from the sheep okay sheep and goats and wool these come under the india s41 now if you take this wool and go to the handloom industry in ludhiana you can make sweaters from it there and you can also dye it and can create different kinds of carpets these processed goods comes in india s2 understood look at this this cow and milk comes under india s41 and butter butter milk all these things come under in as2 we have done this in the class and sheep's wool carpets okay consider cotton plants so the cotton plant is a living plant and you have picked cotton from it raw cotton comes under the india as41 you have made thread from this cotton in the spinning mill that falls under in as2 like picked cotton thread garments these all come under in as2 so note that wherever further processing is involved it will fall under in as2 raw product in in as41 suppose you have sugar cane farm living plants of 41 harvested it this will also come in in as41 you took it to the sugar mill and it was processed to make refined sugar it falls under in as2 and it does not fall in the scope of ind as 41 these popular teak and timber trees you cut down the tree for wood the tree fell down the fallen trees the scope of ind as 41 is still cutting of the trees now you took it to your factory and peeled it cut it properly and made wood logs and lumber of accurate sizes from it that does not falls under ind as 41 this all processing comes under ind as 2 when we shape something up it is considered further processing so you must know what all is covered in india is 41 first plant and animal is covered in it and the second one is the raw output the raw output that you will get at the point of harvest it comes under in as 41 and all the remaining one under in as 2 we discussed about fruit tree suppose you have planted a mango tree the mango tree comes under in as 16 because it is a bearer plant but when you will get the fruit mango that is agricultural produce so in as 41 so the bearer plant comes under in as 16 but its produce is agricultural produce mango tree orange etc will be treated as per in as 41 and its accounting will be done accordingly this means plant and its produce will be treated as per in as 41 animal and its produce in as 41 bearer plant in as 16 but its produce in as 41 all the produce comes under in as 41 i am not telling you anything new we have spent a good amount of time on studying all of these in class you guys forget after taking the class and when you revise from notes again you often wonder after realizing that we have studied this much everything that i taught in class has been written in the notes 
as per the provisions bearer plants are covered under the scope of indus 16 but in as 41 includes agricultural produce from all these plants fruit trees comes in in as 16 and fruit under in as 41 and processed fruit in in as 2 the rubber plant comes under the scope of the in as 16 but the latex that you will get from it it will come under in as 41 all the further products made from rubber plant will come under the end AS2. These all is already known to you and we have studied it. We have already discussed the definition of biological assets and agricultural produce in class. This is nothing new students. Don't think that I am explaining everything fast. I am just revising it. I am here to revise. I must have taught you something if I have recorded four lectures on a chapter. This trend of revisionary classes that is not my style as I prefer to teach and revise slowly with patience. Students don't prefer my slow teaching. Those who studies through my lectures watch at an increased speed as I teach slowly but my motive is to explain the end AS. The revision class is going a little fast. Those who have done the chapter can understand well what I'm saying. This class is not for learning, but for revising. Okay, next. Then we did third concept. Do you remember? First concept was coverage. And then the second concept was definitions. And the third concept is recognition rules. I have come on third concept. These are the recognition rules. Anyone, so students listen to me, you can recognize biological assets in the balance sheet as an asset. Now what comes under biological assets, plants and animals, right? So you can actually show any plants or any animals as an asset in the balance sheet, but only if it satisfies the rules of recognition and there are three conditions mentioned condition number one whether it is a plant or an animal you should have an undisputed ownership which in simple term means it should be under your control if there is a dispute on land over an animal or a plant and if there is a dispute on land then the work you are doing on it will also be disputed so you should have undisputed ownership then only control will be proved. Whether it's a plant or an animal, this should be confirmed that you will get some economic benefits from it. The economic benefits will flow towards the entity and the entity will receive them. When there is undisputed ownership, we take it. There should not be any sharing partner. There should be undisputed ownership and there should be some economic benefits and the economic benefits shall flow to the entity. Now the third is, there should be a reliable valuation of the asset which you have to record on the balance sheet. However, if you don't know about the quantity or worth of the asset, how will you record it? A reliable estimate could be of the fair value and for the cost. You should have the estimate fair value when the fair value is needed. And also you should have the estimate of cost when cost is needed. It means you should have estimate of the value. So if you meet these three conditions, you can recognize biological assets on your balance sheet. We discussed this in class, right? Now students, I have brought you to concept number four, where our accounting part starts, okay? Practical questions are made. Accounting for biological assets. Biological assets includes two things, plants and animals. We started with the accounting for animals first. So firstly, accounting for the animals. And we mark this important. These questions might come in exam. RTP and MTP are also given. Step one is initial recognition. So students, the first step is initial recognition. 
what is the first step the first step is initial recognition when we start the animal accounting i will not talk about plants right now i will only talk about animals when we start accounting for animals the very first step is to purchase the animal i repeat the first step is to buy the animal but animal breeding is also done please give me 2 minutes i will come back to it the first step is to purchase the animal we call it the initial recognition many kids asked me about their doubts on initial recognition on whatsapp message and i was surprised because everything is written in your notebook along with the examples so you don't study if you read these clearly explained examples here for the first time then you won't need to ask any doubt in initial recognition you have to pay attention for two things first thing acquisition expense and when you purchase and bring an animal you have to pay for their transportation cost did you understand so far because if you have to buy an animal first you have to go to the market then you have to buy it from there and bring it via some sort of transport and talking about real and practical example we see cows or buffaloes and other cattles being loaded in trucks in some other sort of transport right sometimes we see the cages of hens they are built differently whenever we buy an animal there are many expenses involved we'll have to pay for transportation loading and unloading expenses and pay brokerage to the broker i had told you acquisition expenses if you go to ind as 16 and see property plant equipment or go to ind as 38 read intangible assets all acquisition expenses are capitalized but the ind as 41 shows differently and says to put it in pnl no capitalization needed the acquisition expense you spent put it in the pnl i explained the reason in ind as 41 it's a fair value model and the fair value model clearly states that the money you spent on the purchase will not be returned to you if you are going to sell the animal today you will not get the money back because animal's price is same you will waste your money for expenses on acquisition make two entries first acquisition expenses to bank pnl account debit and other will be acquisition expense it's over just put it in the pnl the other thing is that we had the purchase price i explained you very clearly that this purchase price is what the buyer gives to the seller let's say we bought an animal and we bought it for 10000 rupees at purchase price we gave the money to other person now don't think that entry is passed for 10000 animal to bank biological asset to bank whereas in as41 states that you can't record an animal for 10000 rupees so first you should find out the fair value less how much is cost to sell let's suppose if you are going to sell the animal that you have purchased today itself and i bought animal for 10000 rupees and i will sell it in market today what will i get it's in ds41 model what to do in ds41 says that fair value less cost to sell i found out that animal which i bought for 10000 rupees and if i sell it now i will have to spend 500 rupees there were expenses to bring it home there will also be expenses for selling it you have to spend on transportation costs and on commission around 500 will be spent now its fair value will be 10000 I bought it for a fair value of ten thousand with expense of five hundred, so you will get ninety five hundred net. So in days forty one says that its value is ninety five hundred rupees because after deduction you will only get ninety five hundred rupees. This five hundred rupees difference that is coming right, this is your loss on initial recognition. Please pay attention. So 
the expenses you incurred on acquisitions are gone forget about them but what you are buying even in that you will have to spend money there are two expenses while buying and while selling the expenses for buying are gone and you should take the valuation of the selling expense as soon as possible therefore when you will do the initial recognition of any animal it should not be done on purchase price it should be on fair value less cost to sell you will need to find out the net fair value of the animal you bought and record it on the net fair value understood now you should make an entry on biological asset debit of 9500 and a loss debit of 500 rupees okay students to cash 10000 file the entries loss will be booked twice acquisition expense as well as valuation do the valuation today itself this is model 41 whole 41 works on the fair value model so what doubts do you have a student watched the class studied the concepts and had no doubts but after an year when he revised he asked why are you writing expenses twice he should read the concepts two expenses are recorded one is purchase that's paid in cash and gone to the pnl while the other is a valuation loss okay the animal you bought today its valuation was done on same day this loss is not being paid it's a valuation loss the animal you bought now its net value is 9500 rupees because there will be expenses in selling too as i explained already look i gave you a proper example in class see i told you to write it in your notebook i bought an animal for 10 lakhs the acquisition costs have come up to 50000 rupees this will all go into pnl this is confirmed for fair value of animals on the date of acquisition i purchased it today and its fair value today is 11 lakh rupees you bought it for less you got the 11 lakh worth of animal for 10 lakhs you made a gain and whether it's loss or gain you will have to book both if the value is less book loss and if the value is more book gain let's leave it record it at the fair value but subject to the commission on the sales of 2% no it's actually 5% fair value is 11 lakhs you have to spend 55000 in commission the remaining is 10 lakh 45000 now tell me the animals you bought were worth 10 lakhs but what is their fair value 1045 so you have gained 45000 now i will record 10 lakh 45000 on the animal which is the net fair value on that now if you look at the answer first of all the acquisition expense will be 50000 we have put it in pnl now we move on to the valuation and the animals are debited at 1045 right payment was made for 10 lakhs with 45000 gain but 1045 is the value which we have to record on fair value this is another example see here we have also transferred the gain in the pnl heard of gain on purchase you earned 45000 rupees gain on purchase it is a net fair value model what can i do we have followed the rules we are part of institute if your commission goes up to 10% then what would happen fair value was 11 lakhs and the commission goes 110 then remains 990 you will have loss of 10000 animal is 990 there was loss of 10000 on payment of 10 lakhs gone to pnl and these are notes on concept that we have already written first i explained it with examples then also wrote down the notes so you don't face any issues the initial recognition of animals should be made at fair value less cost to sell okay students it means that the purchase of an animal is irrelevant for the initial recognition see fair value not purchase price the difference between fair value and purchase price on acquisition date will be considered as loss or gain is that clear it's written any expense incurred at the time of acquisition of animal whether it be transportation loading unloading or commissions all these will be write off in profit and loss 
mostly these expenses are capitalized but now they will go in pnl every single point that i taught in the class is written down in your notebooks right students i don't teach anything that's not in notes you write what i dictate i don't teach from ppt right everything is in your notebook i made you pass general entries first i gave examples then i made notes and passed general entries the first entry is acquisition expense to bank then animals debit loss debit gain credit to bank all your entries are written in the notebook then i am taking you to the next step our first video is finished now this is the second video which is starting from here second video subsequent valuation on balance sheet date the animal that you had initially recognized if it is still present with you till the balance sheet date you will have to do its evaluation so it is a very simple method net fair value balance sheet date take the initial net fair value whatever the difference we will get it will be a fair value gain or loss we will put it in pnl the fair value that you initially recorded and fair value from balance sheet date so the animals will come in the balance sheet at a fair value the animal you recorded will be at fair value in balance sheet so the difference of the old and the current fair value will be put in the pnl if value increases then animal to pnl if it decreases pnl to animal one more thing i had told you that this fair value gain is not done in study mat questions what does study mat do it does not apply this concept in large questions it ignores but this concept exists what was the concept whatever the fair value gain or fair value loss will come on balance sheet date we have to divide it in two parts one is physical change and the other is price change it needs to be shown in two parts since these are the requirements for in as 41 how do we divide suppose i bought this animal on 1st april 2021 i am preparing the balance sheet on 31st march 2022 so when one year has passed after buying the animal's age has also increased let's say i bought an animal here this is my acquisition date at the time of purchase the animal was 3 years old but it became 4 years till the time of recording in the balance sheet so how can you compare a 3 years old animal to a 4 years old animal what you need to do is find out what is the value of a 3 years old animal today okay so let's say i have initially recorded it for 10000 rupees today 3 year old animal on balance sheet date cost 12000 15000 total so as you can see that there is a total gain of 5000 rupees but they say that since there is gain of 5000 rupees out of which the difference of 2000 rupees if we buy a same age animal today how much will it cost us i mean to say that the same animal that we bought when it was 3 years old on the balance sheet date the 3 years old animal is being sold for 12000 today so this 2000 rupees is price change and the remaining 3000 rupees is a physical change because of increased age the animal is 4 years old now its age increased by a year the animal grew bigger so its valuation went up naturally larger animal prices are higher because its size and weight increases so the fair value gain and loss on the balance sheet date was broken down in two parts price change and physical change they will go to pnl like we just showed in parts the institute avoids this and gives the answer based on fair value in big questions often it doesn't give physical price changes and in some questions we have solved answer keeping the ici in front as an example it's a concept when you will do the valuation of animals you should be careful about the age of the animal that is bought okay difference between the value of a same age animal today is the price change like it went up from 10000 to 12000 the 2000 is price change 
and whatever the balancing figure gain will remain, it will be due to the physical changes. Because the age increases, as discussed earlier, I had taken an example. I will read it. What example did we see? A limited bought 500 cows. This is an example that I created. 500 cows bought for 11 lakhs. At the time of acquisition, the fair value was 9,80,000. We recorded it in 980. The remaining 120 is loss, put it in profit and loss. We debited cows by 9,80,000, right? The loss is 1,20,000. Payment is 11 lakh because we do not see the purchase price, but the fair value on the acquisition date and it is 9 lakh 80 thousand which we have recorded. All the cows were 3 years old. On the acquisition date, the cow's age was 3 years, so we will look at the balance sheet date to see how much it is worth today and it will be price change. But the rest will all be physical changes. Balance sheet date, the fair value cost to sell was measured at 12,60,000 for cows. Okay. My valuation came out to 12,60,000 and my initial was 980. So the difference is 1260 minus 980, that is 280, right? Any expenses? This is 280. So now we will divide it in two parts. One is physical change and other is price change. Physical change and price change. Now we will have to see how much is the price of a three year old cow today. If we purchase cows of three years of age at the balance sheet date, then we would have to pay 10 lakh rupees. 10 minus 9.8, 20,000 rupees. Cows worth of 9 lakhs, 80,000 rupees. 3 years old has become worth 10 lakhs. So the price change is 20,000 rupees. Rest 2 lakhs, 60,000 is physical change. See this 1260, 980, 280 and the price change is of 20,000 rupees. Rest is physical change. If you see entries. If you look at them. Cows debit, fair value change of the price and physical change. It will be entered in PNL only. We have just showed. We showed in parts. As per the provisions of end AS41, biological assets means animals should be valued at balance sheet debt on fair value less cost of sell. There may be some difference between the net fair value at acquisition date and the balance sheet date. Such a difference should be treated as change in fair value and transferred to PNL. The following statement should be prepared. Fair value balance sheet and fair value acquisition subtract both. We get changes in fair value. Whatever I am saying here, this is all written in the notes and in the concepts. Then you need to separate the changes into two parts, which is price change and physical change. Price change is net fair value at balance sheet date minus net fair value which was recorded in the same age. Whatever is remaining, it is the balancing figure. After calculating the price change, physical change will be left, which is a balancing figure. This is the working. Then we solved question number one. This is its answer. It was the same as the example we did. Then we solved question number two. Calculation done. Then question number six is very important. It is marked from November 20 RTP. It was solved in class. Question of valuation. After that, I did a special point in step number three. It was accounting of calves. So since this is a concept, we need to discuss it, but being a teacher, I feel a little hesitant to talk about this topic. We are talking about animals breeding here. We have a dairy farm with thousands of cows. 
the cow gave birth to a calf the cow gave birth to calf and we also have a horse farm the animals give birth to offspring when the animals give you calves then you have to keep track of the calves so it is said here that when you buy an animal it costs money and it incurs money but if an animal gives you its young one will that cost you no sir breeding costs money breeding costs are incurred as it's your acquisition expense it will go to the pnl okay cow gave birth to the calf so its cost is zero its price is zero so you can do its valuation and enter all of the amount in income okay now you pass the entry as cow's account debit to p and l it's a 100% gain sir all the young ones of the animals that you get all of them will go to the p and l at fair value one more interesting thing i would like to tell you when you'll do its balance sheet valuation the cow gave birth to a calf today which is one day old you considered it as income and entered in the pnl you'll do the valuation on balance sheet when you do the valuation of calves if we find the difference between the fair value on the balance sheet date and the initial fair value that will be your fair value gain the fun part i was saying is there can't be a break up here price change and physical change cannot come only physical change will come out as price was zero so entire gain is put in the pnl in the name of physical change on balance sheet date so initially all will go to pnl all that will go to pnl and gain that comes on balance sheet date will go to physical change a newborn calf calf's account debit to pnl as per the provisions newborn calf will be recognized as an income at the time of its birth at fair value less cost to sell because it is not acquired it means that it will be an asset without any acquisition price because we didn't get anything our cost is zero then its balance sheet valuation will be done fair value minus fair value and it will be all physical change there is no need to split the fair value into separate headings of price and physical change all the details are in your copy step by step with examples with questions all of that has been written what can i give you better than this presentation i have one flaw in me my only flaw is i can't teach you in shortcuts because of which i have to face criticism so what i believe is <laughs> child says make me a ca the rest i will take care now if this child becomes a ca and he is called to the campus by a multinational company or if someone asks a tricky question from in as how will he answer kids often think why are they teaching us this deep and make us write so much i teach it thinking that after becoming a ca the child will get a good placement i don't know which note which point will be useful in their interview some criticize me for inter as well maybe some kids watching this video might have studied in inter under me they know the accounting standards i taught them when they go for an interview at any of the big four they are asked questions on as whenever you go to a good firm they have good audits all of them they ask as questions there's no harm in knowledge right but not everything has shortcuts a child claims to be chartered accountant but he learned accountancy through shortcuts why did you choose to be a ca it is a ca course and the child is neither ready to study fr nor ready to study direct text give me shortcut please summarize it make a flow chart you can't study this way you have no idea what will you do after becoming ca when you don't have exposure you learn from in as whatever i'm telling you learn to speak about this in public speak up in public speak at seminars speak up in cp hours study groups people will take notes when you speak for 2 or 3 years 
you will stand and win the elections. Growth is somewhere, sir, but you will have to work hard. With shortcut, make me a CA, sir. 400 hours course, finish it in 200 hours because we lack time to study. That is the only flaw I have. Let's move on, okay. Then I made you all do. I am your teacher. That's why I keep saying, please don't get offended. When I can't make things clear to my own son, what can I say to you? I can only give my opinion and it's up to you whether you accept it or not. I'm giving you my opinion whether you agree or not is up to you, right? I can never force my opinion on you. I can only say from experience. Rest the things are such that you'll get it only with age. Yes, a guy used to say. I keep saying this even in the class. The kids get annoyed like why are you giving so many opinions and why so much advice from you? We don't need this. Maybe 10 years later you will remember me man. There was a guy who used to talk all this without a reason, right? So remember me then. Some things you may get today, some things you may get with experience of time. Yes, Jindal sir used to say this, right? Been a teacher for two generations. I've been teaching for 22 years. Students who studied in my initial batch, their kids are studying under me. I've become a two generation teacher now. Many years passed by, I didn't know. Then I made you do question number seven. It's marked important. It has the complete age breakup, animal valuations and everything. You can revise if you want. Second video is over. Then I came to the third video. This is our third video and I started the fourth step in it. Maybe if you remember, we started accounting of animals. The first step in animal accounting is initial recognition. The second is balance sheet valuation. The third is calves accounting and the fourth is agricultural produce. When an animal, it gives you agricultural produce. You will need to pass an entry that day. You have to pass one entry that day. Agricultural produce is debited to P and L. Let's say a cow gives you milk. You will pass the entry as milk account debit to P and L. The amount of produce you get is your income. All that is your income because whatever agricultural produce you get, it will all be sold in the market. Whether it's milk, eggs or wool. So at the point of harvest, what you have to do is all the agricultural produce you receive. You have to enter all of that in the fair value less cost to sell in the P and L. At the point of harvest, the day on which we will separate it. Agricultural produce shall be recorded at fair value less cost to sell. Agricultural produce debited to income statement. This is the initial recognition. Now we are at the unsold inventory. It could also be that you have wool, eggs or milk. If you have stock of these items left, you got agricultural produce, but you could not sell it. It remains unsold. If it's unsold, then its valuation will come again on balance sheet date. So when its valuation comes on the balance sheet date, now 41 will not work. Now you consider that as inventory and apply in AS2. And what does int AS2 say? Cost or NRV, whichever is lower. Now you will say, sir, there is no cost. It is the one you had recorded initially fair value, less cost to sell. Initially, this one, this amount that was recorded. Now this will work as cost in int AS2. It's your cost. Okay, sir, simple. It's just the same fair value model. We initially recorded the fair value. Int AS2 says cost or NRV, whichever is lower. You took the same old cost, then we are looking for fair valuation. But whichever is lower. When you had recorded it, suppose, let's say, we have a stock of 24 rupees. I have one liter of milk and it's 24 rupees. But when we looked at the balance sheet debt, its NRV is 22 rupees which is lower 22 rupees book the loss of 2 rupees NRV is 28 rupees then we will keep it at 24 
if there's a loss we will book it we cannot book again because cost or nrv whichever is lower is considered this means that in the case of agricultural produce in the case of agricultural produce gains cannot be booked only losses can be identified as in as2 works on the concept of prudence and we cannot book anticipated profits income can be booked once which is at the point of harvest but if the harvesting point is missed and balance sheet date arrived then valuation will be according to end as2 okay look at here if any inventory out of agricultural produce remains unsold at balance sheet date then its valuation will be made as per end as2 cost or nrv whichever is lower okay the value which was initially recorded at the point of harvest will be considered as cost the value which was initially recorded at the point of harvest will be considered as cost at balance sheet date the initially recorded one will work as cost the four steps that we read are about animals then i'll take you to the accounting of plants third video is playing now now see plants unit 2 starts from here accounting for plants we have two types of plants one is crops and the other is woods when we talk about crops there are wheat rice cotton sugarcane so in crops we sow paddy we will wait for the time of its harvest why because we have to see the point of harvest the crops are ready in 3 to 4 months at the time of harvesting or we'll see when harvesting time comes so when the crops are being harvested that's their harvesting point you have to check at that point see how much is the fair value less cost to sell pass the entry on that as crops account debit to pnl so that means the accounting for both animals and crops agricultural produce are same the accounting is same for both so the day when you start harvesting the crops you should book as per the price on that day and pass the entry as crop to pnl crop to pnl crop to pnl nothing much to do the accounting for the animals was high we bring the animals and then breed them and get some calves then its balance sheet is valued there is no problem with crops crops are just sown that's it crops are sown there is no hassle of buying no hassle of balance sheet valuation no hassle of calves here it's only about harvesting so only the step of agricultural produce is required in crops nothing else we will follow the same rules as we discussed in step 4 unit 1 okay no new concepts it means that accounting for crops is similar as for animal agricultural produce as crops are agricultural produce too but when we talk about wood like the teak tree poplar or pine wood there is a slight hassle with this so you need to follow these steps we had a question in study mat i made you do it in rtp2 so now in wood let's say i planted a teak tree you know a teak tree will be ready only after 20 years it will take 20 years for this tree to mature so in as41 says you should find out today that what will be the value of a mature tree after 20 years after 20 years what will be the value of a mature tree i said a mature tree is worth 2 lakhs then tell me its present value today i've calculated present value consider it as income what's the deal here we'll explain the crops get ready in 3 to 4 months time and value of money doesn't work here but this wood will be ready in 20 years so will you book the entire income after 20 years no you need to book something year by year year by year okay you need to book something according to the progress stage i don't understand we will tell you just listen calculate the value of a mature tree which you'll get in 20 or 15 years 
based on its present value today, pass the entry. Woods account debit, Wood Tree account debit to P&L. Next year, what will happen to balance sheet date? So let's assume that I'm standing on a chair. I'm standing on a chair whose lifespan is 20 years. As of March 31, 19 years of its life remain. When we consider 19 years, PV factor gets strong. On the balance sheet date, find out the value after 19 years and calculate its present value. Longer the PV factors delayed, the weaker it will be. The earlier the stronger. Calculate its value by applying PV factor for 19 years. Book the fair value change. On every balance sheet date, 18, 17, then 16. So gradually, what will happen in 20 years? You will be booking income little by little. By the time it matures, the income will be booked over the period as per the accrual concept. Look at this now. There was a question on this which we discussed in class 2. Initial recognition. Add first balance sheet after cultivation. Calculate the present value of net fair value of a mature tree at the point of harvest and pass this entry. So what will happen on the next balance sheet date? We will calculate the present value of current balance sheet date, subtract it from old one. The change in the value will be put in PNL. This one will be entered in the PNL. As we move forward, the fair value will increase. So we will gradually add it to the PNL every year. We'll calculate the fair value for 20th year first, add it to PNL. Compare it to the 19th year's fair value to see the yearly change. Then compare the 19th to the 18th and the 18th to the 17th. As the PV factor strengthens, you will gradually notice a difference. Your income of 20 years will be recorded. You don't have to wait 20 years to see this. Not applicable for crops due to the crop cycle of 3-4 months. Will sow and reap same year, thus no use of time value of money. It's simple accounting. The crop is harvested and the income is booked. If you harvest the crop thrice in a year, book the income thrice. I told you all about the workings of plants. Everything's taught in class. Look at this question, it's done. Question two. This is question number two. Then we came to accounting for expenses. Accounting for expenses. It's nothing. The charges of crops, woods and animals are different. Fertilizer, seeds, pesticides, breeding cost, if any expense that you do for the maintenance of your biological assets. We feed the chicken with fodder and we feed grass for the cows. If you want good quality milk, feed the cattle with great fodder. So, any expenses that you incur for maintaining or growing animals or crops, all that goes into the profit and loss account. Whether it's your seeds or pesticides, your fertilizers or breeding cost for animals or their food cost, everything goes to the profit and loss. Should be charged to PNL always, whether it is for growth or if it is for maintenance, a man built a fish farm. You start a fish farm and the fish grows, their weight increases. When weight increases, you make money. This is fish farming. You put in small fishes. You feed them, make them grow big. When their weight and size increases, you sell them. It's a very good business. You understand my point? So the fish food and the medicines that you'll give them, everything is going to P&L. It's all about making money. As per matching concepts, it will go to PNL. Then we spoke about grants. So, in AS20 applies to grants. But if a grant is related to agricultural activities, it falls under in AS41. There are two types of grants conditional and unconditional. If your grant is unconditional, without any condition, the government has given you. So you enter it in PNL. And if you receive a grant with conditions, 
you should amortize it according to the conditions. Look at this. Amortize these grants to P&L according to the conditions. And if, if there is no condition, you can quickly put it in P&L. You have studied this in the AS20. How to amortize and enter in P&L? Accounting is same. We read one more point at last in concept number seven. We read this again. Record the animals at fair value. Calculate the valuation at fair value. Calculate the valuation of crops and woods at fair value. But I don't know the fair value. You don't know the fair value of animals. So here in AS41 says, if you don't know the fair value, then the purchase price that you have, record it considering as cost. If you don't have any idea about fair value, take the cost as fair value. Okay. Be careful about one thing. In accounting, if you have used cost instead of fair value, then accounting of government grants will be reviewed by AS20 not by 41. If you are working on a fair value model, then the accounting for grants will be reviewed by 41. If you are talking about a cost model, then it will be reviewed by 20. And in agriculture, cost is not considered, fair value is known. All the things are tradable in the market. You can't say you don't know the fair value. Auditor may question you if you are auditing an agricultural company and say you don't know the fair value you will say doesn't trading happen in market. Does it have any active market? Yes. Then find out and get back. If the things you are working on have an active market, then fair value cannot be missed. So the seventh concept is just theoretical, not practical. That's why in agricultural produce, fair value is utilized always. I have told you all these things. Then what did I do? After this, extracts of third question was shown how does the income statement and balance sheet look like. It contains all the accounting notes. It was a great question. I made you to the fourth question. Then question number five was given as homework. Explain disclosure. You can read the disclosures. Therefore, your understanding. Video four is here. Okay, question number three, then no concept was taught. Such a long question. Then we did fourth question. Such lengthy question. See here, then Zindal sir said, best of luck. Thank you. I've revised all the concepts for you. Agriculture has been fully revised. Three things are covered, biological assets, agricultural produce, grants. Biological assets include animals and plants, not bearer plants. There are four steps in accounting of animals. Initial balance sheet, calves and agricultural produce. In crops, there are only two types. We have only two types of plants, crops and wood. Wood was the main challenge. You need to calculate PV from mature trees and gradually upgrade it. Everything else was simple. You can revise this, you have notes. Thank you very much, take care. Bye bye, love you, God bless you, bye bye. After this, maybe I will revise you the end AS 33 of EPS. Thank you. Bye-bye.